Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Chris Yee. Today we're taking a look at Printing Press. This is from Grana Games, and it is a follow-up, a sequel to their popular game from last year called Gutenberg. Right. It's a spiritual sibling? What was I the phrase it. I heard recently? Stop. Stop. <laughs> spiritual sibling. Spiritual cousins. <laughs> Twice removed. Uh, Gutenberg is in this game, because <laughs> this actually has a lot of the same symbology... It does. And Same character, the characters look. for the power, the look, yep. Um, although there is a, at least in this box, there was a small misprint. One of the symbols is not in the game. Oh, okay. They, that, they, 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 the board will say, look for the symbol. And you're like, where is it? Oh, they, they, they have that fixed and all. Um, it, I'll say right up front, whether you like Gutenberg or not is not going to determine whether you like this game, I think. I think they're really different games. I would agree with that, yeah. So know that going in. Let's take a look at how it plays. We'll be right back. The game is going to take place over three rounds, and you're going to be keep track of each turn in the round with this marker, and there'll be a final scoring after the third round, and whoever has the most points wins. I want to talk a little bit about initiative here. Each player is going to get a character. So here's Johann Gutenberg and, and William here, and at the beginning of the game, turn one, you're going to use the numbers on them, the higher number, to break who goes first in initiative. But whoever goes last in initiative each turn gets a black cube. It shows that here on this board. And you can also put tiles that have black cubes into your area that you're building each round. And so after the first turn, whoever has more black cubes will go first with these numbers only being used to break ties. The first thing that you'll do in each round is you're going to turn over a number of these plates, these frames, along with a random plate put at the top of it, equal to the number of players plus one, and you're going to be drafting these in initiative order. When you take these, you're looking slightly at these bonuses at the bottom, but more importantly, you're going to look at the plate. The plate says you need an II and a U here, for example, in this area, and if you two I's next to each other, you'll get some more points. So three points if you get the three letters, two points if you follow that. You can also get bonus points. For example, if I have a blue ink in this column over here, if I have these two symbols somewhere in here, I'll get four points. And if I have both of them and the job, I will get an extra two points. So those are the points that you're going for. And so the first thing you do each round is you draft a pair of these. After you've drafted them, you're going to go through a series where you're going to be drafting these different cards. You'll turn over cards that will show various, in this one case it's a blank, but they'll show different colors of inks, different letters, different symbols on them. And again, in initiative order, you'll draft them. Now, when you draft them, you need to put it the way it's showing. So I can't turn this one sideways or upside down. Um, there's a little number at the bottom in case you can't figure out which way it is, but you'll put that in front of you. After that, you can put them next to each other. I can do something like this. I can even overlay them. Um, and I'm slowly trying to build a three by three grid. So if this was done here at the end after I've collected six cards, this seems like what I might want to do, but I can also do this, I could do this, whatever it takes. And a player can, instead of uh, placing a card, they can draw some tiles from the bag and keep one of them. And you can use these tiles to fill in your board when you need to, to put them on different spots to help build this perfect thing that will help you score at the end of a round. At different spots in each round, you'll notice this circle here. That means players are going to be placing a token on their board, which at the end of the game is going to score them two points for every instance of whatever it shows there in all three of their frames at the end of the game. So you'll need to keep your frames. And that's pretty much it. So you're going to go through taking things, you then lock your frame, You'll score points for that frame. You discard all the initiative cubes and start again. At the end, you'll score for these. Each of the characters has special bonuses, like Gutenberg has a turn a two into a three. William here gets an extra token. Um, and Yolanda here gets an extra initiative cube. She gets a token that's any color that she wants. And Helena can move a tile. So they all have different special abilities that they can use, but, but they're very minor abilities and only can be used once per game. There's a, a big genre of games these days that's all about, you know, putting things in patterns and then scoring based on those patterns. Right. This one is 
in that category, but it's a little different because you can overlap, and the nine tiles you pick can change. I, I found that to be really useful in the game, actually, right? Because sometimes you say, like, oh, you can build outside of the 3x3 three three frame that you'll finalize at the end. And you know what? I found myself definitely doing that, where what I was targeting to close up at the end would kind of shift as new things came out. I thought, See, I, I, like I, I very rarely shift it. Because mm. I'd be like, well, this red ink needs to be in the left column. Okay, well, that's my red ink. I'm not moving that. I'm just trying to make the other... I mean, I'll have... It's bigger than the 3x3, three three, but the stuff that goes outside, I'm not shifting my frame. Like, I know in my head where my frame is going to be. I, I often knew, but there were enough turns where I was like, oh, I got stuck with this card at the end because I was later in initiative. If I cover that red ink, but I get a better thing and I shift that red ink up one, then I, you know, there's enough flexibility where I, I, I thought that mechanism wasn't just gimmicky, uh, but it was actually useful. And you're not going to every turn be like, a paradigm shift. But an, it came up enough that I thought, I like that rule being in there. It's a very quick game in many ways. It says, what, 30 to 60 minutes in the box. 45 sounds right. I think so, yeah. Somewhere around there. And it's pretty quick turns. You're drafting something. And then everyone drafts, and then everyone's sitting there trying to figure out the best way. You put out new ones. My only concern about that is I thought it was slightly clunky. Not hugely clunky, but slightly clunky. Every round, it's like, who's first? Who's second? Who's third? Because yes. it changes a lot. If I get a double cube that I put in my thing, I'm like, oh, now I'm first. Oh, you also got a cube. Now you have two, and I have two. Okay, your initiative's higher, so you're first, second. Meanwhile, there guy's like, I'm, am I still third? <laughs> but initiative matters in this game. It's not like something you can ignore because, oh, man, when you see that perfect card come up and someone else takes it, you're, you're not a happy camper. No, it's, it's not vicious because it's, it's never done to be like, ha, ha. Um, well, except for there, there is... You On the final spin turn, turn, I definitely took one someone else wanted because it had symbols that they were going to get points for. And I was like, well, no. I think as it gets closer to the end of the game, you can kind of read that situation. Or when you're, when you're chucking it, like that's the worst that's feeling. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> when you're like, that perfect card, I just need to wait one more person. And they're like, meh. <laughs> but I, I really like the draw from the bag action. Because taking three tiles and keeping one means you have a good chance of finding what you're looking for, something that you can use. Or and if not, you can always flip the tile over and just use the black cube, but that's... I'm trying to think if I ever did that. I've never done it? I know you can. The, yes. It, you feel like the safety, like, well, no tile is completely worthless. But... No, no tile left behind. Got it. The special powers are nice. They're very minor compared to other games. I agree, yeah. But... That's okay. I'm okay. I'm okay with the special powers being minor. The game is really easy to teach. The, the The hardest thing about the game to teach, for some reason, is putting out the tokens that score you points. Because it says, okay, so you put, you're going to put a two point token on one of the two things at the bottom, and at the end of the game, that's going to score you two points for all instances of that. If you do that same exact one again, you use a one point token instead of a two. And the rules are, I, I had to read the rules like three times. I'm like. What? This is the same section, yeah, that I was like, am I reading this correctly? And because all the tokens have a one and two point side, so I just in my head assumed you put the one point out, but then you could pick it again and now it's two points. No, you put two out and if you pick it again, it's three. And I was like, well, that's not worth it. I'm just picking another two. And maybe it is. I don't know that they must have found people who ran away with it, who got two, four, six, you know, they got the same thing. I suppose, but that's the only clunky rule. The other, the rest of it, people are going to be like, "Ooh, interesting." Ooh, ah, ah. you know. Yeah, it's it's just constantly rewarding because even if you are stuck with a bum card, being able to to ditch it and get three of the, you know, the three tiles. And as you said, even with those three tiles, you might not get something. But it, it has like a series of compensation, right? You just, oh, you don't like the three tiles that you drew. You can make, you know, you can make it into a an initiative cube. And go first the next turn. I do like that. You might have, uh, you might stick a lot of those cubes kind of off in the periphery of the tableau you're building for that round, right? And have like a monstrous initiative this round. But as soon as you frame it, those are gone. That also adds to the tricky. Like, okay, well, Tom's clearly first, and you're like, no, no, that was last round. Yeah, that's true. Y you know, but like, but all those options are really good in there. Um, if, if not just a bit clunky for how fast the game actually is. 
Now, we've been refraining from comparing it to Gutenberg because, like I said, they're different games. The only thing that's really the same mechanic-wise is that that job plus the bonuses is similar to the way the Gutenberg scored. Gutenberg also had a job that gave you points and then bonuses. Other than that, they play very differently. I think Gutenberg is the better game for me. It's also not a particularly long game. It's a little over. It's like between an hour and 90 minutes, but it plays. So you're always playing. All kinds of cool things to do. This feels more like a filler version of that. I still enjoy it. I'm giving it a 7.5. I think it's fun to play. It's easy to teach. Um, but the little cards just makes me happy to slide those little cards around and make things. Yeah. And, and to fill out the frame. Um, and it it's... I, I wonder if it's going to be one that I'm going to remember very strongly at the end of the year. Like, oh, printing press. But mm. I, I enjoy it. So that's why, that's why my rating's there. I, I'm giving this one an 8 because I think that it's about as fun for me as Gutenberg. And it's quicker. Really? Yeah. Well, it definitely is quicker. It's definitely quicker, right? That's actually one of my knocks of, about Gutenberg. I think that that game is engaging and fun the whole time. But it tends to just feel a little bit longer than... I want it to, okay. and it could be because I'm often teaching it to new people. Right. And uh, same thing with this one. You know, you're you're at first you're going to have people asking you a few questions, clarifying this. Okay, you have to score all of these things in order to get these bonuses and stuff. And uh, yes, and then counting up the initiative. But I think it's I think it's almost as fun as Gutenberg, and yet somehow a little bit less memorable, as you said. But, well, Gutenberg has the gears and yeah. has the little wooden letters. That stuff's like, wow. Oh, yeah. And this has good production. It has a little cat paw because... That's the one thing, though. I mean, wow. I mean, other than that, it, this doesn't wow me as much. But again, like I, I think it's okay for how quick it plays. I agree. I agree. So, yeah, I, I enjoy it. This is probably about the same score I would give Gutenberg just because they fill different purposes. This one feels... It's not a filler game. It's not in that you know really short category, but it's it's not too far from that. It's it's great for kind of a, you could even pull this out a, you know and when you're not going to feature a big game for the night. This one I still think fits that and feels rewarding. So it's an eight. Well, there you go, folks. That's Printing Press. I'm Tom Vassell and I'm Chris Yee. When was the Printing Press in Bennett? Sixteen sixty four. You're slightly off. Look it up.